In the context of this presentation, we are not talking about nanoparticles. We are not talking about developing robots that can go around your body and fight disease at will and make you last, uh, live longer. What we're talking about are surface modification. So if you change the energy of an implant, you'll change how it interacts with your body. Well, we're just doing the same thing at the nanoscale. We're putting nano features where you have micron features, and that is also controlling surface energy to control how cells respond. And a couple of, of routine uh, things for, for shot peening is the first treatment for all of the materials, and there's five different shot peening processes I'll talk about, and then there'll be a controlled titanium sample that was not shot peened. But in all five of those cases, the first step was basically to use a stainless steel cut wire. You can see the intensity to expose the titanium uh, alloy to. Then the second treatments were either a type 2 anodization process or a microbead shot peening or the combination of two, of both of those. Okay, so we basically have a series of samples that all of them underwent this exposure to a stainless steel cut wire and then the subsequent events changed, which I'll highlight as we go through the results. So the objective for the part one, and I'll, I'll, I broke this presentation into, into a couple parts to be easy to follow, I hope. The objective for part one was really to take the shocking materials that electronics made and characterize them. Are we changing roughness? And most importantly, are we changing energy? Which gets us back to our rationale of using nano features in the first place. So here are some SEM pictures. You notice the abbreviation BA at the top. The BA sample is only the titanium alloy. Now BD, also increased roughness, was a combination of everything I've talked about so far. So this is your most aggressive change of surface roughness. So this was exposed to the stainless steel cut wire, then uh, microbeaded and type 2 anodization was followed. And then BE was just a different type of microbead process. This was using a ceramic as opposed to a metallic microbead, which also demonstrated increased roughness. We used um, an atomic force microscope to quantify this change of roughness. And as you can clearly see, everything compared to the titanium control was more rough. So that followed our thinking. Using Shopini, increased, shop, in, increased surface roughness at the nanoscale. You notice that there are different trends within roughness, but the one with the greatest roughness was this R, was this BD material, the material in which we used shot peening as well as the type 2 anodization, the combined approach. We also looked at surface energy, and you see the same trend. Compared to titanium, every process that involved shot peening had an increased surface energy. So the contact angles were lower. For those of you that don't do this, you can put drops of liquids on surfaces, measure their angle. The lower the angle, the more the drop is spread on the surface, so the more it's hydrophilic. Right? The water drop is spreading more, so it's more hydrophilic. So you can see the angles are all lower compared to titanium control. And again, the BD, the combination material, was the most hydrophilic out of them all. So part one summary, you can just see from the characterization studies, we were able to increase roughness and energy using shot peening. And the one that was the best was the combination approach. So part two was really to look at these materials in the presence of bone cells. I have a lot more data I could show you, but in short, this is an example of what we're seeing. This is calcium deposition. Of course, one of the most important functions of a bone cell is to deposit calcium, which composes bone. So what we saw in these studies for, for various periods of time, from 7 to 21 days, the y-axis is calcium deposition. We saw every single shot peen material had more calcium deposition from bone cells than the titanium control. And you guessed it, the one that had the most was the BD sample, the one that had the highest nanoscale roughness and the one that had the highest surface energy. So from those studies, we believe we've correlated a shot peening procedure that can maximize nanoscale surface features to increase responses from bone cells. Now the third part, real quick, was just an in vivo translation of these in vitro results. And again, I could share with you a lot more results, but really don't have the time to. We did a standard rat calvaria study where a defect is created in the skull of rats, and then these materials were inserted 
for various periods of time. As just a quick example, we did push out strengths after 28 days. So this is where you use an MTS machine and you push the implant out of the bone that may have grown on the surface of your material. So the more strength it takes to push it out, the more bone that grew. So as you can see, our in vitro results translated in vivo. Every shopping material was better than the titanium control, and the one that was the best was the BD, or the combination highest nanoscale surface roughness material. We also can measure bone to implant contact. Same thing. <coughs> the bone, measuring the amount of bone that was next to the implant surface was the greatest for any material that was shopping, but it was the most, uh, it was the highest on that, uh, the, the samples that had the increased surface roughness. So, we translated these results in vitro to at least this rat calvaria model in vivo. Now, the last part that I really wanted to tell you about was bacteria. So, as we saw in the last presentation, the wonderful statistics that were given, infection is a big problem in our community. In the whole medical device community, this is a problem. And we have taken the, the issue that we think we're going about treating infections or bacteria presence in the wrong way. We've primarily been relying on drugs. And for those of you that have followed the antibiotic field, many bacteria now develop resistance to the antibiotics that we're prescribing. There are, you know, MRSA is, is a Staph aurora strain that has developed a resistance to a drug that we created to kill it. So I think we need novel approaches, and I think nanotechnology might create some of the solutions that, that we can employ to decrease the presence of implant infection, which, if you follow some of the studies, is actually increasing, not decreasing. So we wanted to look at a series of bacteria. So this should be pretty quick, because we see the same results that I just described to you for bone cells, only were inhibiting bacteria on the same samples that we were promoting bone formation. So one bacteria that prominently infects orthopedic implants is called Staphylococcus epidermidis, the bacteria on your skin that easily crawls into wounds. You can see for any time period you pick, all materials did better at inhibiting that bacteria than the titanium control. And the one that inhibited bacteria functions the most was the most nano rough sample. And again, we did not include any antibiotics in this study. This is altering surface roughness alone on a titanium alloy that did this. Staphylococcus auroris, this is one of the bacteria that's developed a resistance to many <coughs> antibiotics that are currently prescribed in the clinical situation. Same result. No matter which time period you look at, everything was, was lower than uh, the titanium control and the BD sample was the lowest. The third bacteria that we've looked at so far, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, another common bacteria that infects orthopedic implants, same thing. Increasing nanoscale roughness inhibited the attachment and growth of that bacteria as well. And the reason why that's important too is if you pay attention to bacteria, you have gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. And many times you have to prescribe something different for gram-positive than what you do for gram-negative. But as I just showed you, at least on the shot peened materials, the increasing nanoscale roughness can decrease both gram positive and gram negative bacteria functions. So there might be something, something here. So the last part is just correlating this all back to where I started. How and why are we seeing these responses on these shot peened materials? So to do that, you'll have to forgive me, I'm going to say three very biological terms, uh, three proteins that are in your body, which you may not have heard of, but we pay a lot of attention to. They're in your blood in microgram per ml quantities, but they have huge influences on inhibiting bacteria and promoting bone growth. And that's vitronectin, fibronectin, and laminin. So those three proteins that are in your blood, they're very hydrophilic proteins. So if we've created a surface that has higher hydrophilicity, hopefully, the rationale was we should see increased absorption of these three very good proteins for the orthopedic medical device community. So here's the results, and you can see that in fact, when we allow these samples to soak in a solution that, that we have that emulates blood, 
we basically see the greatest amount of absorption of those three proteins, vitronectin, fibronectin, and laminin, on the greater nanoscale rough material. The one that had the highest surface energy was the most wettable. So in fact, we altered surface energy by just changing nanoscale roughness. That allowed for an increased absorption of these proteins, which we think is why we saw less bacteria and more bone growth on these materials. So the summary, to tie it all back together, we think that creating nanoscale features, certainly a process that can do this is shop heating, can increase surface energy to control a real biological response like bone growth or inhibiting bacteria without using drugs. So I think I, I hope I just concluded by saying the same thing, and I hope that I was, was clear uh, in, in the presentation. I thank you for your attention.